from the church without judgment. Today's message will be called Sit at His Feet. Today's message is called Sit at His Feet. sit at his feet that's where things change we want to sit at Jesus' feet today I love you guys thank you for all my subscribers I don't even know how many I have anymore it doesn't matter the only thing that matters right now is we sit at Jesus' feet this is going to be taken from Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. I'm going to pray real quick. Hope you guys had a great weekend. Today's Tuesday. We're going to sit at his feet. And we're going to talk about the hem of his garments. We're going to talk about some intentional things today. Father God, we just thank you. Lord, we hear the birds chirping and we thank you. Forgive us of our sins, Lord. Holy Spirit, and Lord, forgive us of our transgressions. Holy Spirit, guide us. Help us to impart this word for change. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, you guys. I'm going to try to bring this. We want to sit at Jesus' feet. The backdrop, Martha and Mary and Jesus, and he's invited to their house. A certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. When Jesus is welcomed into your house, you better prepare. But you need to be honest, you need to be transparent, you need to be yourself, Those, there's no reason to put on any mask. But he's invited into this house. One is excitedly distracted by doing service table. She's wiping down and picking up and putting properly in place. Have you ever just wanted to be perfect but you kept messing up? The other one, She's being intentional, and today, I want to be intentional. The past is over. We want to be intentional. Listen to this. We're getting ready to go in. This is called Sit at His Feet. Now, it happened as they went that he entered a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. He, she welcomed him Jesus into her house and she had a sister called Mary who also who also there was two women two doing two dynamically different things who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word but Martha was distracted with much serving and she approached him and said Lord do you not care that my sister had left me to serve alone, therefore tell her to help me. She needs help. But listen to what Jesus says in 41 and 42. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. This is the cosmos right now. You can put your name in there. I can put my name in there. Martha, Martha, this is Jesus. He's speaking to us. You are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. This is what is needed in the earth, and I'm going to show us. And Mary has chosen that good part. You know what the good part is? The word of God, which will not be taken away from her, which will not be taken away from her. 
one individual was tending to tables and the other one was sitting at Jesus' feet. Do you know why she was sitting at Jesus' feet? I'm going to explain it right now. It's pretty simple, but it's, it's a serious nugget. She had intentional hearing. She wanted to hear his words. She had intentional, she had attention to detail up front. One invited her in. The other one was sitting there waiting intentionally for his word out the gate. Out the gate, you know what that means. At, in the beginning, he created them, male and female. That's not what I'm talking about. She, when, when they opened up the door, Jesus came in and it says that, it says that she, and she had a sister called Mary who also sat at his feet hearing his words. When you get intentional with the Lord, he'll get intentional with you because I want to show you something. In Hebrews chapter four, 12 and 13, this is what she was intentionally hearing out of the gate. She sat by his feet because she didn't have to be by his feet. The spirit drew her to his feet. Then this is what she got. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of the joint and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Did you hear that? I'm going to break that down. I'm going to break this down. The word of God for the word of God is living and powerful. First of all, it is not dead. The Bible, the word of God, first of all, what it does is it judges the thoughts. It judges the thoughts of who? Man. God judges us by his word and he judges the attitudes. God judges the thoughts in 412 and 13. God's word, she sat by his feet so that she could get her thoughts and her attitudes washed by his word. And his word does this. It brings forth health. It fixes your health in the name of Jesus. The word of God will fix your emotions. Do you want your emotions fixed? The word of God will fix your mind. And you remember in Romans chapter 12, it talks about the mind of Christ. It'll fix your health. You will, you will be healthy. It might not take overnight. It might take longer, but it doesn't matter how long, as long as you get the healing. Then it will touch your emotions. Then it will heal your mind. It will give you hope. The word of God will give you hope. It will give you direction. It will give you love, agape love, unconditional love. That's that love that it doesn't, it doesn't matter what you've done, that it just keeps coming in there and it fills up more love. It's agape love. Then there's a leo and uh -huh, there's a leo, phileo and eros. That's the, the making of the love. That's later with the man, the, the, the Adam and the Eve. It will give you health, emotions. It will fix your mind. It will bring hope and faith, direction, love, and freedom to serve. It will give you freedom to serve. The word of God will give you freedom to serve. That's why Mary was by his feet, because later she was serving. They both served. But watch this. Now it happened. As they went 
that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him in. She welcomed him in, but the other one did this. And she had a sister called Mary who also sat at. She sat at. I love that word. She sat at his feet. That denotes she was close. That denotes her behavior matched his. She sat at. She wanted to get so personally close and intimate that she sat by his feet and he might have not had sandals on. He might have been barefooted. He might have had sand all between them, but she did not care because what happens is it will guard your heart. And when we guard our heart, that's the, that's the last component I wanted to talk about. The word of God will cover your heart. It will seal it with a kiss. Mary decided to prostrate herself in humility. That's another thing. She got prostrated. She went down and just sat by his feet. I can see it. And she, as she started to preach and teach, she looked down at his feet and they were oily and dirty. And then as she started to look up, she saw the sanctity of God. And then she saw him being, it looked like he was a man. And by the time she got up by his breastplate, she saw the deity. She saw the Messiah and she was changed. When he opened up that, when they opened up, when Martha opened up that door to that house, when he left, Mary had sanctity of Jesus all over her. I don't know what ended up happening with Martha, but even through the Bible, they followed him everywhere. You can't be in his presence without change. That's why you'll know if somebody is walking next to the Lord because they'll be changed. They'll be transfigured. Do you want that right now? I'm getting ready to pray us out. God saying right now, guard your heart and get it intentional with his word. He wants us to sit at his feet. He's asking and is requiring us, and I need to do a better job of this too, reading my word. You can do it in an audio book. You can read a literal Bible, but the word is in there. The Bible, it is the word of God. It is his tangible presence. It really is. It is for the word of God is living. For the word of God is living. Say it is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. That's why I don't have no sword in here. I don't have, a, uh, I'm not going to tell you what I got. Don't worry about it. But it's sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even to the division in soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. It does this. The word of God judges the thoughts of man and it judges the attitudes, the reasons why we do what we do. Why, why, why are, why is our behaviors? Why do we do what we do? And then he's so intentional. He will help us. He will help us to remove to remove anything that is not supposed to be there because he says he judges the thoughts. So he wants to take out the reasonings why we think the way. And then after we think for so long, after 21 days, it becomes a behavior. He wants us to change the behavior. And then after we change it, we'll go, he wants to guard our hearts after the change, after 21 days. They say anything, anybody can change after 21 days. Sit at the feet of Jesus, Father God, right now. Lord, we want to sit at your feet. We want a full transformation today, Lord. We want to be like Mary and we want to guard our heart because she knew as you entered in that 
prostate to show complete humility, but most importantly, sit down and listen. We have two ears and one mouth. Lord, you're calling us to be quiet at times. You're calling us to listen because someone may have the answer. It may be an angel. It may be another human. It may be you. You may come in human form. Lord, help us so that we can hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Remnant, we must decide who we're going to serve. Father, help us to declare your handiworks. Help us to see that you are exalted and highly raised up. Because, Lord, you said the church will not be defiled, but the church will be pure, without spot or wrinkle. The church, the ecclesia of the Lord. Help the ministers, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be hopeful. Help us to have faith. Most importantly, help us love the sheep, Lord, as you love us. In Jesus' name, from the church of the Judgment, Shabbat Shalom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty for all those that love Jesus. He wants me to tell you, sit at his feet. Sit at his feet where he judges the thoughts and the attitudes of all humanity in Christ Jesus. He is the anointed one of Israel. Bye-bye, Minister Mark. I love you. I love you. Praise the Lord for you guys. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for joining my church. I'll give you an update soon. Bye-bye.